you very much. So first, so I want to thank organizers uh, to give an opportunity to talk in this uh, very informative conference. And if you see my title and my uh, abstract, then it was a kind of written that I'm planning to talk about equivariant uh, granite structures. And uh, that is somehow related to the, uh, how we study modular space of holomorphic curve in equivariant ways. And actually, the abstract is kind of more on a foundation side. But actually, uh, I, I would like to talk more on, about uh, applications today. The main reason is that when I wrote abstract, then the application is not yet so much clear. But the uh, last two weeks, I made some progress, so I can talk more applications. So the most of my talk is on applications. So let me begin with which kind of situations uh, I want to study. So we consider x a uh, symplectic manifold and with uh, maybe compact or convex at infinity. And we assume that there is an action of a compactory group which preserves symplectic structure. And we assume there is a moment map. So up to some point, we don't need the moment map. But the main application is, is this case. It's a moment map. Yeah. Pardon? GS1? No, no, compact. Oh, you are right. You are right. <laughs> so is this too big or too small? <laughs> Maybe too big. <laughs> but anyway, so now we consider um, a symplectic quotient. So we assume we consider this uh, 0 is a regular value. Uh, there are something we might try to do in, in other, but uh, let me con assume it. Then we consider mu inverse zero, and we assume that the action is free. So this is somehow simple situations. Then, as you know, the symplectic quotient is just a quotient by mu inverse zero divided by g, and uh, it, this is uh, usually right x divided by g. So this is another symplectic manifold. So this is the situations I want to study. And then uh, I want to study Lagrangian Flair theory above and below. And I want to compare. That's the thing I want to explain today. So first of all, we consider the following Lagrangian sum manifold. So L is a sum manifold in this mu inverse 0. And which is in X, and this is supposed to be a Lagrangian sum manifold in X. So we consider Lagrangian sum manifold in X, but uh, the case where it happened to be contained in an inverse image of the moment map, zero. And we assume that L is G equivariant. Then L bar is uh, L divided by G. And this is a Lagrangian sum manifold of y. So this is uh, our situations. So first, uh, something about the foundation part is, is the following. So this is a situation that we want to, the main theorem is something like that we compare Lagrangian Flair theory of such a L in, a, in a x and the Lagrangian Flair theory of this L bar in y. This is missing somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's here. OK, but then I want to make some remarks what, 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 what I say, what I say about equivariant Lagrangian Freya theory above. So we consider beta. Yeah, beta and uh, H2 of x L D and M K plus 1 beta is a modular space of homework curve or homework disk or kind of, maybe it may have a bubble, but you have this uh, 
I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't write it precise, but you have a holomorphic disk to XL, U, it is holomorphic, and, uh, ah. and it is stable. And we consider this uh, K plus 1 marked point in, on the boundary. So this is MK plus 1 beta. And uh, this is what we use usually to study Gromov-Witten theory. And uh, in this case, we consider the following things. So you have this uh, MK plus 1 beta, and you have this uh, L to the power K, L. So this is the evaluation map. And uh, in the usual uh, in the usual story of gromov witten invariant, we use this diagram to have some operations between cohomology or differential form or any change on, on, on L. But today, I want to do it in an equivalent way. So, as you see, we first take our almost complex structure or complex, or, or, or complex structure to be G invariant. We can always do so. Then, uh, it is uh, quite obvious from definitions, this mk plus 1 beta has uh, g actions. And since uh, L lies on a boundary, and uh, L, L lies on an image of moment map, and the moment map is free on mu inverse 0, this g action is free. So you have a free g action, so you, you can cook up the following diagram. We divide by g and L, L divided by, by G. So this is L bar. And then you have this uh, L divided by G, K. So this is uh, L bar, K. Probably, this is a bit cheap version. If you want to really seriously on a equivalent homology, then not just a quotient. You have to kind of take Borel constructions. And uh, I mean, the difference is that here we just use uh, um, L bar as a space. But in general, for example, homology of L bar, should be acted by the cohomology of the classifying space of your D group G. But uh, that, that, that is not the case. So, so, in, in, so I, I want to, this is rather a simple version, simplified version of this uh, equivalent theory. But what I want, what I want to claim is that, uh, so, so the, 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 the thing this equivalent Kranich structure means that uh, this guy has a Kranich structure. So this is something I wanted to play to, to talk, but I, I just uh, not talk today. But you, you have in a, in a situation that these are the G actions, you can define these finite dimensional reductions in a G equivariant way. So you have this uh, virtual fundamental chain business after taking quotient. And then you observe that once we do it, then you have these uh, operations. Let me write MKG. It is from the differential form of L bar, tensor K, and the differential form of L bar, maybe no, tensor to its novical ring. You can just use this correspondence to cook up these this operations, and they satisfy this A infinity relations. So as, as I say that it should be better that to, to take Borel, Borel constructions then this is something like, uh, uh, then, then, you know, this, this gives some operations between homology group of L bar. But probably this operation should be equivalent with respect to this uh, cohomology of BG. Yes. Now maybe you, you, have, you have this uh, still non trivial actions. So you have a canonical map from L bar to B of G. So, so you have some, some, something, something more. But today, I just thrown it away, and you, you, you just consider the simple ones. So now, well, once we do this, then, then you can imagine that, I mean, you know, the, the only non-trivial part which is not a kind of written is this existence of this equivariant current structures. Then the other thing is just automatic. Then what we do is kind of have this infinity category, whose object is this L, and uh, L is a, uh, uh, this the equivalent or in some manifold, and then you, you, you take this uh, sp maybe spin structure. Ow. So let me write it again. So let me write this um, uh, 
the simplified version of the equivalent category. So since I, I, I forgot this, uh, uh, I forgot this uh, uh, BG action, so this is simplified versions. Its object is uh, L and the space structure. And L is contained in this uh, view in bath zero in X and G equivariant. And this is this is a curved category. If you want to kill curve, the curve you just put this bounding chain, but uh, that's something I go on. But anyway, so now this is above, and also then then you have this uh, similar infinity operations. So kind of free chain complex L1, L2 is a is a drum complex L1 cap L2 divided by G. Novikov ring. So we assume that this is clean intersections. You, you may not expect this is, uh, this is a transversal because uh, G, G action is non trivial. So, about, so we assume that this, this intersection is a finite union of G orbit. They have this, so this is finite dimensional lambda module. And here L1 is equal to L2, we have that, that situation. So this is L bar, cohomology of uh, drum complex of L bar. So this, is, this looks very much similar to this uh, NPT category of the quotient. And you can, in an obvious way, you can extend this, this constructions to get this uh, G equivariant uh, infinity structure. So this is uh, something we have above. So, so now once we have this, then I can state the main theorems. The theorem is uh, the following. Maybe, I don't know, I, I, this is the theorem, but it's not, 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 not yet. The proof is not written, so usually you need some parent or something like that. The, then the, the theorem is that there exists some B, which is an element of the cohomology below with the positive part of the Novikov ring. So this is something like uh, Lambda all positive, and maybe AI is, yeah, I, I don't take real number, such that this equivalent version of this uh, uh, NFT category, X mu Z simplified version is, uh, is equivalent to the category of Y, but with beta. So this is something like a, uh, Infinity so, so obtain this infinity category using this. This is bulk deformations. So what, what I mean that it's, uh, I, I, I'll explain what, what, what this bulk deformation means. But if you, you, you want to study Lagrange Frey theory above, then you, it is a, in, in this equivariant context. Then it is the same uh, uh, below, but you need some particular uh, deformation parameter downstairs. Yes, it, because there are something like a, some kind of carbon map, it's subjective. So, so this is the theorem I want to explain. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go more detail, but I think there are many works related to this uh, 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 gauge sigma model or kind of uh, quasi map things, and people study somehow related problems. For example, in the context of Lagrange Frey theory, there's a work by Rohenfelder and also Chris Woodward does do something. But I think their, their way of doing it is slightly different because, uh, in a sense, they, they just uh, try to they just consider these this things and use this in place of something downstairs. And they, they, I think they expect something like this, but they never study these kind of problems. And also, uh, also they use something like a more twisted uh, maps. Here, you have just, uh, so here, the, 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 this side, you only consider the, uh, we only consider this map from, uh, from disk to, the, to X. And uh, in, 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 in many, many people uh, study something like a twisted map, something called a gauge sigma model. That is, I, I, don't, I don't know so much, so I just start checking the reference uh, a few days before. I, I, there are huge references, so I, I, I'm, I'm sorry I missed something. But uh, you, what usually people do is, is something like this, right? Usually people study some. Riemann surface, 
and uh, you have this some um, uh, bundle. And this is the structure group is G, and uh, this, this is the G bundle, and they study some kind of uh, sections together with some connections of these bundles, and then they put some equation which is called uh, gauged with them, a gauge, gauge human model equation. And it, 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 it goes back to, I think, this Witten's work, and there are several, many, many people work, working, working on it. So, yeah. I, I don't know, I just, I just some, some reference, but this kind of thing is studied by Witten Mundet and Salomon Gaio Chilbak, Chokan Fontaine, Kim, and uh, yeah, what is, what is it? Yeah, Woodward Gonzalez and Tian Xiu, and Fan and uh, Shem. So I think there might be, I, 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 I couldn't check, there are so many people, so I, if I miss somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, but it's, but it's, what I want to say is that my, 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 my way of thinking is a bit different, so this is, a, this is the, I, think I, I will go to this, uh, how, how this can be related to this at the end of the, my, my talk. Actually, something which, you know, if you just consider the case when this uh, connection is trivial, and E is just a direct product, then this, this, this left-hand side is obtained. In, in that way. And the effect of something which this is a kind of band is non trivial, or this A is non zero, I think is, is somehow reflected in this uh, choice of bulk classes. So you try to calculate these bulk classes, then, 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 then the, the geometric way to calculate it is to study some gauge sigma model which has uh, some twisting. But uh, what I claim is that I don't claim anything like that. I just claim that there exists this uh, bulk class in a canonical way so that uh, you have this. Uh, Isomorphism. And uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think I don't want to talk so many applications of the theorems. I, 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 mainly because I just uh, have just uh, thinking about it. But uh, you know, the, the simplest case is uh, very peop many, many people is doing just X in CN. And you have a torus action, CN plus K, and torus actions. And then Y is. Uh, Symplectic, why is this a toric manifold? Toric manifold. And what, 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 what people found in this case, so if you consider this uh, toric, uh, if, if, if Tn is a Tn, is an orbit of this toric structure, then uh, something we studied, uh, there are several other people study, is uh, there is something called super potential, which in, in our Terminology is no, no, not this one. Which in our terminology is M zero. So you have you have this consider this M zero one. So you have this uh, 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 this thing. Uh, so you have this uh, x is x1, xn is h1 of uh, this uh, tn orbit. Then you consider this uh, sum of mk of uh, x, x. And since we use this bulk class, we consider this guy. And then this sum is something called uh, randall Ginzburg superpotential. So we have this kind of bare. Y and Y I is e to the power x i and this is a random Kinsman potential. So this is something we have downstairs, and if you try to calculate similar thing, in a, so so, so this, this one came from this uh, infinity structures on this uh, uh, symplectic quotient, and uh, if you go up, then the, the co corresponding structure is actually very easy to calculate because the, the inverse image is just a direct product of S one in C n. And that is used by many people. And in above, so if you consider this MKZ, then, then this is just, this is called a W0, W0Y. And this is something we call simplified now leading order uh, potential functions. Or, this is, I think, is calculated by many people, like uh, I think Holy Buffer's paper, it, it appears. The difference is that this, this, this one, in general, has infinitely many terms. And this one has only, uh, uh, I think, 
only the, 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 the number of this term is exactly the same as uh, irreducible component of this uh, 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 toric divisor. And you have this finitely many terms, and which is explicitly calculated. And this explicit calculation in above is not so difficult, because it is just S1 and uh, S, S1 C. And th th this, this, this particular claim, we, uh, this theorem means that uh, you can choose this B, this bulk classes, so that this uh, bulk deformed superpotential is exactly equal to this uh, uh, leading order things. So in general, if you just bulk is just zero, you have uh, many extra term, which, which uh, in, in a final case, this, this is zero. You can just take zero, and this guy is exactly equal to zero. I think this is basically due to Chow, Chow and O. But if you add somehow, if you consider non-final non, non, non final case, you have some, some, some disk and several S2 uh, going around the, on the historic divisors. And they give some non-trivial deformations on this leading order functions. But this particular claim says that you choose this bulk classes in a correct way, then this, this extra term is cancelled. But actually, this, 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 this claim itself is not so, it's already proved in our, I think, at least third, in this uh, asterisk paper of uh, FO cube, because uh, this, this deformation is uh, universal. So, but, but, uh, but something which, which I said that it, this kind of phenomenon happens in rather complete generality. So any G quotient, then if you put some bulk term, then above and below is the same. So that's the claim. Okay. So I want to explain some main idea of the proof in the rest of this uh, talk. So, the, so as I said, that uh, the idea uh, uh, people, somehow there might be some similar idea using this uh, gauge sigma model, in that somehow they have some particular limit. They have, they have some two limit, and one particular limit gives this uh, 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 something in the quotient spaces. But then if you go to the other limit, they have this whole curve in kind of in, in the above. But th that is not the way I want to take. So I want to take somehow simplified way, and uh, the idea is to use this uh, Lagrangian correspondence at Kirt. So, oh yeah. Maybe one can say that one, 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 one main, main part of the story is the following things. Suppose you have this L in this uh, uh, simple quotient and G equivalent. Then, uh, then, and, and then you have this L bar. L bar is L over G. Then we consider this uh, uh, sigma L divided G. And you have this uh, infinity operations. And uh, so this is one thing. And uh, below, we have this. This is, this is the same thing. And you have this usual infinity operations. And, and one consequence of this theorem is, uh, is this. So there exists uh, B. So that this uh, infinity algebra above is uh, unobstructed if and only if this infinity algebra below with this bulk deformation is unobstructed. So this, this is uh, one consequence of this uh, main theorem. And let me mention, in this toric case, so in, this, in, the, in the toric case, it is rather easy to prove that this is, uh, the above is unobstructed. So, uh, uh, actually, weakly unobstructed. And in the, in the but, but, so this implies that uh, the same thing in the below is weakly unobstructed. And I, I'm rather happy to mention this, because in our series of, in our FO cube series of toric papers, this is the most delicate statement to prove. If you consider toric manifold, all the Lagrangian fiber is, an, is weakly unobstructed, that we proved, but we, we, it, it's a kind of a very, very delicate argument using equivariance and equivariant perturbations. So I, I, I'm happy to have another proof of this uh, delicate statement. But anyway, so now I, I want to, mainly I want to explain how to prove this, 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 this statement. So how to prove it? So idea, as I said, is that using this uh, uh, idea of Lagrangian correspondence. Actually, th th this kind of Lagrangian correspondence business I have been working on on a year about a bit more. And uh, so th this Lagrangian correspondence thing is uh, 
worked much by Wilhelm uh, and Woodward. And, uh, but the, the particular version I'm studying is somehow more related to this one by this Jan Kirikiri and Lipiansky. So we consider this kind of things. So I want to consider th 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 these things. So I have, I have this guy, and you, I take this U tilde, U, and I want to put L, L bar, and several marked points. So I want to explain this, this, this moduli space. And to study this moduli space is the main part of the proof of the theorem. So, so, the, 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 so this is a moduli space, and u tilde. So, so you have this uh, u tilde is a map from minus one zero cross r to x. X is above, and u is a map from 0, 1 cross r to y. Y is a symplectic quotient. And, and we have some conditions. So the, the main point is how, how we fix this. The condition is the following. U tilde 0 tau is contained in this image of moment map. And U tilde 0 tau is equivalent to U0 tau modulo g. Let me remind you y is mu inverse 0 g. So you have this u tilde, and you have this so-called matching conditions. And this kind of thing is actually very much uh, uh, used. For well, example, basically, Lipiansky uses the very similar things in a context of uh, when g is uh, infinite dimensions. So you have this kind of, in, in that situation, this is something like uh, uh, AST connections. And this is a homomorphic curve, and you have this matching conditions that he, he introduced. But the, this is also very natural from the point of view of Lagrangian correspondence. In fact, the, in fact, the pair of, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I, I'll go back to that point. So, so, so this is a moduli space I want to use. And also, I put several marked points on, on these uh, two boundaries. So we have this. Uh, We have this K1 marked point. We have this K1 marked point on this uh, minus 1 cross R, maybe K, uh, kind of a n numbering with respect to this order. So you have this Z11, Z12. Z13, and you have this another thing, Z21, Z22, and you have another K2 marked point on, on this uh, 1 cross R. And uh, you, you may, so, so you may have this, uh, some boundary conditions of the minus, tau minus infinity and plus infinity, but in this case, we just assume energy is finite. Then it goes somewhere automatically in exponential order. This is the kind of bottom situations. So we assume energy is finite. So you stir omega is finite, maybe omega x, and you tilde. And you star omega y is finite. So this is a, this is a moduli space. Of course, you need to compactify this, this moduli space. And uh, compactification, there are several problems about compactification, but I will, I will explain, I will mention later on. But anyway, you have this, this moduli space. Let me write it this MK1, K2, uh, L, L tilde, L bar, right. And then the evaluation map, you have this, this marked point, you have two evaluation map, L to the power K1 and uh, L bar to the power K2. So that is, uh, that is the situation. And, uh, and but then, uh, then in a similar way for this uh, uh, moduli space to study equivariant uh, free homology on uh, above, this space uh, naturally has a G actions. So G action is uh, defined in the following way. So you take you, change, you have this pair of u tilde u, uh, 
We have this pair, u tilde u, and uh, marked points. We have this g. Then you can just change this u tilde by g and do not change anything. So this this Lagrangian is so so you, so you just change this g u tilde by g actions, and this side of other thing you don't change at all. So this is a natural related g actions, and then. You divide this diagram by everything by G, then you get this diagram. And you have again this L bar K1. So this is a diagram. And also, you have this two evaluation map to L, L bar. I just want to. Mention what is this? Uh, de describe what is this? Uh, uh, another evaluation map. It came from uh, tau go to plus infinity and minus infinity. So, yeah. Oh. Ah. It's a bit difficult to handle. Okay, so, so, so this evaluation map at plus minus infinity is, is, is simply defined by if you have a u tilde u, then uh, we map it to this limit tau go to minus infinity of u t tau. So it's a kind of something you look downstairs. And uh, since energy is finite, then these two maps kind of becoming constant in exponential order. So you can just define this evaluation map. And so this is evaluation map minus infinity. And you have similar evaluation map plus infinity. So this is uh, that, that diagram. So that diagram gives a map, which I want to write m k1, k2. It is a map from this uh, uh, bab bab downstairs k1. And uh, this is L bar. Up. This is this is also to L L bar. And then you have this uh, omega L bar tensor K two. And then then this goes to omega L bar, uh, maybe in a logical fling. So this is a kind of o operations like this. And uh, the claim is that. Uh, Actually, this is there are some, some uh, point where I need to correct it. But uh, the claim it, it means that this gives an uh, infinity bimodule structure. So, yeah. So let me mention one uh, lemma, uh, one proposition which I used uh, from the last year's uh, frequently in this Lagrangian correspondence business. It is the following lemma. And I want to use this lemma to prove the main statement. So suppose you have this C1. C2 is uh, in, in general curved uh, infinity algebra. And D is an uh, infinity bimodule And I will explain what, what it means. That it, suppose that you have a so called, what you call cyclic element. Then, Then, then uh, C1 is uh, unobstructed if and only if C2 is uh, unobstructed. So let me remind that unobstructed means that. Uh, there exists some B, so that the sum is zero. So you have a solution of moral Cartan 
equations. And the main claim is a bit more, it's a kind of uh, Mora Carta uh, element, Mora Carta moduli of C1 and Mora Carta moduli of C2 is uh, up to gauge equivalence is isomorphic in, in these settings. And, uh, and uh, so, so the, the claim is that this is a bimodule structure. And then, uh, then you can see that this is actually the isomorphic things. And in this kind of setting, we can apply these theorems so that one is unobstructed, then the other is unobstructed. So maybe, but, but actually, this is uh, wrong because uh, then there is no room to find this uh, bulk classes. So I need to kind of, the, the correct, correct claim is that if you co collect this uh, second one by certain bulk deformations, then this gives an uh, infinity bimodule structure. So, but uh, maybe I want to mention, what, explain what this claim is. So, infinity bimodule structure is something like this. So, infinity bimodule structure on, on this C1 gives something like this. You have this C1 tensor K1, tensor D, tensor C2, tensor K2, 2. D of an optical ring, and this is called, I want to call N, no, N, N, K1, K2. So this is a kind of bimodule operations, and uh, the basic equality for this to be a FET bimodule structure is the following. <laughs> no, my, my athletic skills is extremely low. Oh, yes. Okay, I succeed. <laughs> okay, this, is not, this shouldn't be so difficult. <laughs> okay, so now, now the basic relation is the following. Suppose that this xi is in C1 and the yi in C2 and z in D. Then we consider this uh, n x blah 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 n, x blah 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 z blah 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 y, y. So this is the first thing. So you apply n twice plus n, x blah 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 m, x blah 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 z, y blah blah blah. So you apply m on the c1 side. And the third one is n, x blah 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 z, y blah 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 m, y blah blah blah. Blah, blah, blah. And this is zero. And this looks complicated, but it's, it's not so, so difficult. You have several x, z, and several y. And first, you, you, put, you take some uh, subset, kind of, uh, uh, kind of connected subset. Then if, it, if z is contained, you apply n. And if only x contained, it is uh, m. And if only y, it is apply m. And then you apply n again. So then this, this, this sum should be zero. So that, that, that is this uh, uh, infinity bimodule things. And if you see that uh, all higher thing is, uh, is trivial, this just means that you have a bimodule over C, D, C1, C2. And so this is the FET bimodule structure. And the cyclic element is the following. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, so cyclic element is the following. One in D is a cyclic element. The first of all, so D, no, no, a, a, N zero, zero of one is zero modulo higher order term. And uh, X and N one zero X one is isomorphism. So this is from C one to D is isomorphism. And uh, y two and zero one one y is c two to d. This is also isomorphism. So, so roughly speaking, if you, if this is uh, if this is just uh, equivalence is zero, you have some cycle so that the uh, right multiplication and the left multiplication 
give the isomorphism between infinite the algebra and this module. So that is a cyclic element. What do you mean isomorphism? As, 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 a, as a vector space. Set of theoretical isomorphism. Lambda plus? Or lambda zero. Or lambda zero? Yeah. I mean, if it's a higher order term, it exists, but uh, if it's an isomorphism in a zero order, then it's automatically isomorphism. So this is a cyclic element. So the, this, this algebraic statement is that, uh, suppose you have this uh, two actions of infinity algebra, bimodular bi actions of infinity algebra, and you have a cyclic element, the one is abstracted, then the other is unobstructed. Could, uh, could we weaken this condition to just induce this isomorphism on the multi-modular? Yeah, probably, yes, yeah. Because that would be more natural. Yeah, yeah, I think one can do it, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, but you know what we say is that, but but but, but, but uh, you know b before you ha you have this uh, bounding contents, then so I, I this, this says that uh, something like uh, what what you said hold up to positive, up to kind of error term or positive energy. Then the main theorem says that if you have that kind of situations, you can you can use this bounding contain so that it exactly holds. That, that's kind of that's kind of homological perturbation lemma. Okay, so now this is the statement I want to use, and I don't want to prove this. Uh, once, once you know the statement, it's, it's not so difficult. You, you can just do some inductions to prove it. So now, now, you know, in our situations, we have this uh, something above and something below, and we have some some bimodular structure, and we want to relate this and this using this this this, this lemma. So I want to. So that, that the main point is that. Uh, so why this this should be an uh, infinity bimodular structure, and as usual. It, is, uh, uh, it can be proved by using the uh, compactifications of this modular spaces how, and how its co-dimension one boundary looks like. And in this case, so let us try to see what is the boundary of this modular space. So now we have this uh, trip station. So I mean, uh, proving by picture is much easier in this case. You have this trip, and you have your tilde, you have your various marked points, but I forgot it. Then, then you, you consider what, is, uh, what happens at uh, a dimension one. Then, then the one natural thing is you have this u tilde, u, and you have this disk. So this 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 in in in, a, in a X you have some some holomorphic disk on X and it, it it bubbles on this on this end. And oh, I don't remember whether I I I, I, I mentioned the so when, when I define modular space maybe I forgot to mention what is the boundary conditions. U tilde U and what is U tilde minus one zero minus one tau. So I'm I'm very sorry. This should be in an arrow and U. One tau is L bar. Sorry. So th th this part should go to L, and this part should go to L bar. I'm sorry. This is something I forgot. Output is up, upwards. Okay, Input is left and right and downstairs. My module element is a uh, module element is something you see on on this uh, infinity. So now, this is a, this is a first first uh, first uh, first kind of dimension one boundary, and there are several other dimension one boundary. You have two others. The next co-dimension one boundary is uh, something like this, right? You can easily observe. You can just split into two parts. And the third one is uh, something like this. So maybe it's L, T, L, L, L bar, L bar, U tilde, U. So, uh, so now we, we, we so now we look this uh, three types of uh, one boundary, and if you look this uh, particular formulas, 
Then this uh, first type of formula just corresponds to this uh, sliding end. You have these two dis distinct things. And this, uh, this guy corresponds to something split in the left. And the third one here is something which split on the right. So if this is all the dimension one boundaries, by, by just the usual argument, you can prove that this is an infinity bimodule structure. But uh, something interesting happens because this is not all the boundary, boundary things. Because you have this some, some line in the, in, the, in the middle. And uh, if you just look at this from the point of view of kind of direct product, Lagrangian correspondence kind of things, it, there happen bubble on this uh, line. So there is something which happens. So there's a bubble, what do you mean, one bubble? Like something like this. So th this is the dimension one bubble. And if you have this bubble, of course, uh, this uh, bimodule relation is broken. So, and, and this is related to the following things about the Lagrangian correspondence things. So what is this issue in Lagrangian correspondence? You have this x1 and x2, and you have this L12 on this product. It's a Lagrangian summary for. Then this Lagrangian correspondence thing is that this, this, this associates some functor on this category of x1 to this category of x2, this infinity functor. That is kind of very, kind of a, a statement I have been working on this, and uh, I think it's just go back to where Hamoud was. And, but uh, you know, the pro problem is uh, this doesn't fall in complete generality. So if, if, to get this infinity functor, the condition is L12 is unobstructed. And uh, the reason is exactly this kind of bubbles. Can I ask in the toric case, is it easy to see this, um, the, the fact that you have to put a bounding co-chain in order to correct? So in the toric case, we know the potential yes. downstairs to meet the Falk insertion. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping that this Falk insertion would have to be easily could be expressed in terms of the correspondence. Yes. And the fact that I mean, so in the toric case, probably the easiest way is to just go the same argument as I explained now. I mean, in the case of Fano or something like that, in that case, script B is supposed to be zero, you can do it. But then if you have a non-Fano non case, then you have to find the script B, and that is kind of the same kind of argument. So I don't think it simplifies so much. So now, now the argument is, is so now, now the question is the following. We, we, our our, my, our bimodule here is actually obtained by this Lagrangian correspondence. And the main issue is uh, whether so, so, so in, in, in this case, in, in our particular settings, the correspondence, Lagrangian correspondence is given by the following object. So something corresponding to L12 in our situation is uh, xy in x cross y, and mu of x is 0, and y is x modulo z. Right? This is the conditions we put here. And this is a Lagrangian sum manifold in x cross y. So in, in our case, our Lagrangian sum manifold is exactly that guy. And the question is whether this particular Lagrangian sum manifold is unobstructed or not. And the claim is that it is so after bulk deformations. So, what, so, so now I want to claim that this L12 is unobstructed. So it is here. But then to prove it, we use the following statement, which we proved which uh, proved uh, maybe, so there is a theorem in our book. It's the following, so suppose in general you have this maybe L and M, you have Lagrange sum manifold and in symplectic manifold, then there exists OK of L, which lies in a cohomology of L with no bigger fling parameter divided by the image of the cohomology of ambient symplectic manifold with no coupling parameter, such that. <coughs> yeah. Such that if all of this is zero, Then there exists B on ambient cohomology, and uh, there exists small b in a 
Well, I'm going to just summon for that, that um, after this bulk deformations, this is the molar Carlton element. So to obtain molar Carlton element, we have obstructions. To obtain molar Carlton element of this infinity structure, we have uh, obstructions, which lies in a cohomology of the Lorentz sum manifold divided by the image of, uh, of the cohomology class of ambient simplex manifold. And this is uh, something we proved. And then, then th th this situation is a bit uh, 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 kind of uh, a bit modified because he, in this first, first factor, you have uh, G actions. So in actual situation, is something like we are studying y in y cross y, because this is divided by g. And you see that this, this, in this case, that condition is actually satisfied. So we can, we can use this theorem, but maybe it is better to kind of look the proof of the theorems and how we can find this bulk classes in this particular case. So it is more explicit. So now, but not completely because you need modular space, but then, then I want to use this uh, proof of this uh, theorem. Then I want to consider, but then uh, before, maybe it's better to mention how, how we use this bulk deformations. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what is this uh, bulk deformed in feature algebra? So let me mention a bit in general how this bulk is used. So suppose you have this LM M, and you have this B, maybe which you take this some, some chains, or maybe differential form, but let me, this is, looks similar. Then you can just consider the following modular spaces. You have this uh, K mapped points, G0, and also you, you put some interior mapped points, and you constrain that this interior marked point goes to this uh, bulk classes. So you, you not only consider this uh, modular space of holomorphic disk, but you require the finite many points which go to our bulk. The, then, the, so, then, so if this is a number, so this gives something like a, what, what we call a Q. So this is a, a kind of, uh, this is a closed open gromophy 10 invariant. And you have this Q, K, L. If this uh, B, B, X1, XK. So, so th th this is a map. So this, if B is fixed, then I, then I just want to look at L, or L. So you, you have uh, L insertions. Th th this means that you assume, you, on these polygons, you assume that you have uh, L marked points. So this is L is 4. L marked points, which are supposed to go to this, uh, uh, of this bulk classes. And then you can do the same, same business. You can get these uh, operations. But then you just take this uh, uh, sum over all L divided by the L factorials. So this is what we call MK beta. So this is how this uh, bulk things uh, are, are, are defined. So this is the, this is the first thing I, I, I need to, I want to explain. So now, the so next thing is, uh, let me go back to our, so this is a general story. But then I want to go back to our original problem. So what is the problem is, uh, is the following, right? So suppose you have this, uh, suppose you have this modular space of a pair of u tilde and u, and I want to say that there is some, uh, uh, some bubble here. And I want to see what this, uh, what I wrote this, this bubble a bit more precisely. And uh, for a moment, you easily see that this, this bubble looks like something like this. You have this S2. You have this S2. And then U tilde is a upper half plane to x. And U is a lower half plane to x. You have U tilde here and U here. And you consider Z in this intersections. Then uh, U tilde. Z is in an inverse image of a moment map, and U tilde Z is equal to U Z modulo, modulo G. So this is some, 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 some version of this uh, strip things. If you see what happens when some bubble happens, then you will see these configurations in the, in the limit. 
And the issue is that there is no reason that this is non-trivial. Non and I think in the case of toric manifold, you have a lot of examples that this is actually non-trivial. So now I want to kill this bubble. But then, 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 uh, then as, as, I, as, I, as you can see from this kind of statement, this construction is uh, in, by inductions. So we consider the moduli space of, of, of this kind with the smallest energy. So if you consider a kind of energy of this one, you con consider the one with the smallest energy, then there can be uh, uh, except uh, zero. Zero is uh, unstable, so, so zero does not exist. So if you have a kind of smallest energy, then you see that uh, um, there is no further bubble because this is the smallest energy. So this gives a cycle. So if, you, you, if, so, so the, if the smallest energy, this gives a cycle. The smallest energy of this modular space, this gives a cycle in L. Right? I have this one marked point there, so you, you kind of take a variation map at one more marked point. You have a cycle in L, so this is a O1. It's a cohomology class, homology class of L. But then, you know, this, this, this is a kind of a case of diagonal. So the bulk class you are supposed to put is uh, uh, not L. I'm sorry, X. Y, 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 yeah, Y. Sorry, this is Y. You know what we do is that we have this 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 modular space, and let me remind you that this this modular space has no relation with the Lagrangian sum manifold. It is just on X and Y. So you can evaluate here. You have an element in uh, Y. So you have a cycle in Y. And then the claim is that the first order, the first First term of the bulk, B, is uh, actually, it's kind of B1, it's minus O1. So we, we take this, uh, so this is, a, this is a cycle in, in Y, so you just take this uh, minus of the same cycle as the first order term of the bulk. And then, then, you know, what, what that means is that we replace this configuration, but then we use this bulk, so you have this kind of after many marked points here with bulk P1. So this is a collection of the, of the bimodule bi structures. And I want to claim that then, then this first order is, is, is actually disappear. You know, first of all, you just consider this, this, this boundary. Then, then this, this bulk may be here. So this boundary corresponds to this infinity algebra with this bulk P1 in, the, in, the, in, the, in this side. But then if you consider this middle, so the bubble in the middle is changed in the following way. So the so, so the, the, this uh, error term which came from this bulk, of, uh, uh, which came from this bubble in the middle, is uh, related to this picture. You have this arbitrary many b one. So this is something like a, this is u tilde. And this, I don't know. I'm sorry. Low, lower hemisphere. So up, u tilde is again the map to x, and then u is a map to the y, and you have a matching condition here, and also you have some finitely many marked points in lower hemisphere, which we constrained to go to this bulk class, B1. So now, I want to, I want to look at this picture, and you have, a, you have a two, so, so the lower order, order, lowest order, lowest energy thing, it's two, two, there are two kinds of lowest energy thing. One is just this, without any bulk. And the other is this guy. This is B1, and this is zero, zero. So this, this first one, is, it gives O1. It is the same thing as O1. But you have another thing, because you have a constant map in an in a, in a upper half plane, and the constant map in a lower half plane. This is stable, because you have one marked point downstairs. And this one marked point, you're constrained by this uh, B1. And this gives, of course, B1 itself. And uh, the, our choice of B1 is exactly O1 plus B1 is 0. So this lowest energy of uh, error term just cancels. 
So this is the, yeah? No, 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 it, it's a ground of compactness. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just uh, kill this first order term. Then among, uh, among which is not killed, you consider the lowest order term. And again, by the same reason, it is a cycle. And then you add to the second term of the, of the bulk. And uh, because of this ground of compactness type thing, you have a kind of a sequence of the collections so that the oldest uh, error term is uh, just cancelled. So you get this... Uh, infinity bimodule structures. And then, using this, uh, using this uh, lemma, we can do this, uh, 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 we can prove this thing. So I think the, 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 the relation to this, uh, uh, for example, gauge sigma model seems to be, this, this, this moduli space on this O1 have, have somehow some flavor of this gauge sigma model. Because this is something like a map which is a go, go to x, but this u map to y. And this is contractible, so you can lift to y. But you have this, uh, th th this part is something like a non-trivial G-twist. So you try to lift this picture, then I think you have a non-trivial uh, principal G bundle with, with, uh, with x as a fiber. So this kind of thing seems to be related to this, uh, uh, to this uh, twisted part of this gauge sigma model. But to, 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 to do analysis, analysis, analysis to see that this is actually equal to that kind of thing is, uh, is not so easy. Anyway, so now I stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>